Hello, my name is Yuzu, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to edit your painted photographed artwork in Krita. So I'm going to open the file and let's see, let's go to most recent. This should be it. Yes, this is it. All right. So first we need to crop this. So I'm gonna go over to this little box with the circle in it. And right under it is the crop tool. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to crop the edges as much as possible. And we're gonna fix some of the distortion in a step just a moment so I like the way that looks so I'm gonna hit crop and it gives you a nice cropped image so we're gonna go up here to this little tool it looks like a little picture with a dot inside of it you're gonna click that and in this box it says tools and options so if we go over here to warp it gives us these little boxes so I'm gonna warp this down a little bit. I'm going to warp this down a little bit. That way it makes the picture a little bit more straighter. Just slight changes. You don't want to do anything too much. You don't want to distort your image, but you just want to make it look normal. So I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to bring this down just a little bit more. And you can also add some more boxes to get a finer control of the crop. And people have a different way of doing this. Like in Photoshop, there's a perspective crop tool, and that works a little bit better. Um, but for now, this is kind of the solution that I have to use and utilize. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done and you kind of have to find a good balance of boxes so that you're not warping too much. And we'll have to check that, hit apply see how it's okay so that's a little bit better so I'm gonna crop it just a little bit more just to get these edges nice and neatened up I might take it up just a little bit further like that hit crop so now we're gonna get to the fun part where we're gonna start editing the colors so to do that you're gonna go up to filter Krita is a little bit different than Photoshop, but it's free and it's open source, so that's why you use it. Um, so you go to Adjust, and we're going to go to Color Adjustment Curves. So you're going to get this little box. Don't worry about any of this stuff right away. Um, for now, we're just going to adjust the tone and the contrast. So I like to bring the curve down a little bit, and then click around here and bring it up, and that just brightens things, makes things a little bit more even, and contrast, you don't want to do it too much, you just want to make sure that it looks like the colors of the original artwork, because when you take pictures of artwork, the colors tend to be a little bit um, unsaturated, a little bit brighter because of the light, so we're just kind of bringing those colors back up, we're not doing too much to the image, so we're going to click OK, and it's going to look like this, and we'll show See the difference? See how much better the colors look? And this looks much more like the original image. And of course, every color is going to look different on different computer screens, but just make sure that it looks to an acceptable internet quality because you don't want things to be desaturated. So yeah, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to filter, adjust, and levels. No, we already, yes, levels. So we're gonna bring up this panel and this slider 
adjusts the darks and this slider adjusts the whites and this one you can I'm not sure exactly how it works but it messes around with the darkness so I like to bring the darkness just a little bit further in and the brightness just a little bit further uh, it's too much just a little bit further in you don't want to lose too much details but you want to make sure that your brights pop and that nothing is lost in the image quality so I'm going to hit OK so if we go back at our changes see the difference see that difference it's a huge difference so um, you can stop here if you want um, in my original artwork if I get my picture here it looks like the colors are pretty accurate but I think that on the computer screen it's looking a bit more red than I want so we're gonna go back to filter we're gonna go to adjust and we're gonna go back to color adjustment curves so we're gonna go to the red channel and start playing around with it um, maybe red's not the right one maybe go green yeah okay so that's yeah so green is gonna con so green and red are on the opposite sides of the color wheel so if something's looking a little bit more red you're gonna want to adjust the green um, so to make this look a little bit more orange I'm going to adjust slightly so that's going to bring in more of those orangey yellow tones and it's also going to make the blue pop a little bit more so i'm going to hit okay so now i have all these little white spots because of um, paint splatter um, some of its dust so to fix those little spots we're going to go up to this healing brush tool um, oh wait that's the wrong tool we're going to go Ah, here it is to the smart patch tool and I like to put my patch radius up a little bit high and I like to adjust it to a more of like a high quality um, slower load time so you're just gonna click where those little dots are and you can zoom in I'm just gonna click click uh, maybe a little bit and we're just gonna do some of the bigger more obtrusive ones because I don't want to mess around I don't like to digitally alter my pieces so if you want to move around you can hit the space bar that'll bring up this nifty hand tool and you can go around your painting so just these spots that are kind of obtrusive and it gets rid of it perfectly And I'm not doing anything to the actual artwork. I'm really just cleaning up these edges to make it a more appealing piece for digital. And I'm not getting rid of all the white spots, but just the ones that are really bright. Kind of annoying. Don't need to be there. Oh, uh, some dust here. Some little dust here any little specks and I mean when you zoom out you're not gonna see this but it's just a little extra step I like to take with all my pictures just makes things look a little bit neater a little bit more professional here's a big one And 
And with all editing, you just want to play around with it, see what looks best, and you don't want to go overboard with the editing. You're really just making the colors look better. To see how a lot of those like obtrusive dots are gone and now we have like the final image. So I like to get my tablet out. Uh, grab my tablet. And I sign my name. Um, I sign my name real quick. Say my name. Say my name. Sign my name. Tutorial's getting long. So I use a Wacom Intos Pro Medium tablet. So I'm going to go to the brush tool. And what I have is the Bristles One Details. It's in the paint of the brush presets. And my Krita might look different than yours. Just use your best judgment. So I'm going to sign with a darker red. Something that will match the picture very well. Probably this yeah, this one looks nice. And then just sign my name. So now what we're gonna do is plug my mouse back in. Now what we're going to do is go to we're gonna file, save as, I'm going to save this as Flareon. Go to and I'm going to save it as a Krita file because I like to save an original always just in case I want to go back and edit something so I click save and then we're gonna to go to edit or hold on um no image is it image yes it is and we're gonna rescale image to new size so we're gonna hit scale image to new size and for internet I like to go and do maybe a thousand two hundred it's usually a good size and because my camera wasn't the highest quality it's at a 72 resolution if you're going to be making prints of course you're going to want to use like a higher quality camera but if you're just displaying things on your personal pages um you know you're not turning this image into prints this is really all you're going to need so I hit okay makes it a little bit smaller so this is it at a hundred percent it takes up the full screen so I'm gonna go to file export Flareon and we're gonna change it to a PNG and I like PNG because it's lossless which means that it doesn't lose quality when you save it so I use PNG and then I also save a JPEG version just because some websites prefer to use JPEG so if you're posting from Instagram um, or if you're going to post Instagram for your computer, this is a great way. Um, not a great way, but they just need the JPEG format. They don't accept PNG. So if you're going to be posting to anywhere that doesn't accept PNG, save a, save a JPEG. So I'm going to export and go to JPEG, save. And I make sure that the quality is all the way up because it's already not like a great quality photo. So, I mean, no one's going to be able to steal this at a thousand pixels, create prints out of it, and do something amazing with it. Like, I have the original artwork. I can take pictures of the actual file, of a big file size, and create prints of it. It's not going to be an issue. Um, I'm not too worried about people stealing my images. And that's the tutorial. We're done now. So, you got your image. It's ready to go. You can post it wherever you want. It's in a nice format. Um, and that's how you use Krita. I didn't see many tutorials using Krita, and I just wanted to show people that you don't need expensive tools to create good quality images for your computer.
thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Mm,